Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker, and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is CVS is not CVS. That's right, it's Melville. Believe it or not, the history of CVS is fascinating, and we're going to go through it today because it's highly instructive. So, if we're going to understand healthcare, then we need to understand the corporations in healthcare. And corporations in healthcare are nothing but collections of people. So we have to understand the people within these corporations if we're going to understand healthcare. And we're going to use CVS as a microcosm for that today. Now, CVS, as many of you know, stands for Consumer Value Source. It was started in 1963 by Stanley Goldstein, his brother, and a third partner. Now, soon after that, so it was sold to the Melville Corporation in 1969. So only six years later, they only had like 20 CVSs at the time, which still in that time, in just six years, that was a huge accomplishment to go from one to 20 stores. Now, what was Melville? They were a conglomerate of retail stores. Their biggest one at the time being Tom McCann Shoes. When I was a little kid, I used to get my shoes at Tom McCann Shoes. Now, they, Melville also owned the Marshalls Discount Clothing Store. They owned linens and things. They owned KB Toys. So, it, listen, if you grew up in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, you know these companies very well. We used to shop at all these places. So CVS was just one of many, and they owned more than this, was just one of many retailers within this huge conglomerate of Melville. Now, the CEO of Melville was this guy, Frank Rooney. Frankly, he is a corporate genius. Almost nobody knows about him. He was the CEO of Melville from 1964 to 1987 for 23 years. Now, during that time, the stock went up 60 times. It, which is a 20% per year annual growth rate. I mean, that's like on par, if not better, than Warren Buffett. It is unreal, okay? He grew it to a $7 billion business. Again, Frank Rooney is a genius. Okay, next, after he retired, what happened? It went back to Stanley Goldstein, the founder of CVS, who ran it from 1987 to 1999, at which point there was a huge decision that was made, and that was Melville got rid of all of their retail companies and they only focused on CVS and in fact they renamed the company CVS. So Melville no longer exists. Melville became CVS and that was in 1996. So then Tom Ryan becomes the CEO when Stanley Goldstein steps down in 1999 and then Tom Ryan, also another genius, CEO from 99 to 2011 for 12 years. That's when Larry Merlot, that many of you are familiar with, becomes the CEO of CVS. And he's the CEO from 2011 until it was just announced a few days ago that he's going to be stepping down in 2021. And he's going to be replaced by Karen Lynch, who is uh, from the Aetna side, who will be the first female CEO of CVS. Now, keep in mind. Since CVS is founding, it went from Stanley Goldstein to Frank Rooney, back to Stanley Goldstein, to Tom Ryan, to Larry Merlot. In CVS's entire history, they have only had four CEOs. That is an incredibly low number of CEOs for a company, and it's part of the reason for their success that we're going to get into. Okay, now, the key to CVS being the massive company that it is today is because of acquisitions. Okay, of course, many of you know the, the probably one of the most important acquisitions CVS ever made was their acquisition of Caremark in 2007. Great, they already had a PBM, but it greatly expanded their PBM capabilities. Okay, they also have bought a ton of pharmacy chains. They bought Clinton, Mac, Peoples. When I grew up in the suburbs of DC, we went to Peoples Pharmacy, and then all of a sudden one day it became CVS. Revco, Arbor, Ecker, Savon, Oscar Pharmacies, Longs, and of course the Target Pharmacies. And if you add up all these pharmacy chains combined, it is 7,551 locations. Now, CVS has a total of about 10,000 locations nationwide, which means that like 75% of their locations came through acquisition. And they used a ton of debt for their acquisitions of Aetna, for their acquisition of Caremark, and then for their acquisitions of all these pharmacies. So what's the point? The point is, is that the success of CVS can really, in my opinion, be brought down and coalesced into three things. Those three things being, look, exceptional leadership. See, whether it's because of luck or they just have, happen to have the ability to groom these amazing CEOs, they have had four amazing CEOs, and Karen Lynch might be the fifth. Okay. 
Next, they strategically used debt to grow by acquisition. Did they just outcompete their competitors and that's how they got go big? No, they bought their competitors. So they used debt incredibly strategically. And then finally, they made major shifts in their business. They made a huge bet. They were a diversified retailer. Guess what? They got out of the diversified retailer business, which guess what? You don't want to be in the toy business anymore. You don't want to be in the towel business anymore. You don't want to be in the shoe business anymore. And they got out of all those businesses. And then in phase two, they just focused on the CVS pharmacies. And then they made another huge shift where now the vast majority of their revenue comes actually from their PBM. They make more money from their PBM than they do from their stores. So they have made some major shifts and they've used debt to grow and they've had amazing leaders. And that is, is what has brought CVS to what it is today. And I think it's a story we all need to know. And thank you for watching A Healthcare Scene.